Start up with a story, okay? Uh, not a story, it's a kind of experience. A uh, couple of months back, we uh, went there and we were sitting together and we started discussing into some AA view. Okay. So we had a team here, so we kind of common mentalities, and we discussed and finalized starting up an AA project. Okay. So it's simple. We come up with an idea, we form a group, we start creating a POC. Hope you know what is a POC. Group of concern. Whenever we are thinking something, we need to make it happen. For that, we just need a group. And only the higher management or respective top management will be accepting that idea. We just need funding, we just need spending hours. There are many associated things. So in order to get that, we start with POC. So within a couple of weeks, we could able to deliver that POC. And the end result was everybody was happy with that. And the CEO, CTO, again, they accepted. Okay. We were very happy. And we started our actual development. Then the end thing was changed. Okay. So the very first. Rajesh, can you stand here? Okay. When we started an actual development, the lot of issues were popping up. Whatever we thought, it was not a real scenario. So we were having issues, we were having uh, longer breakdowns and burnouts. Even after months, we couldn't be able to deliver that actual expectation. As we thought of completing everything within a couple of months, we completed it release date. We repeatedly changed and we were forced to change the release date because we couldn't be able to deliver that kind of work pressure. So that is the reality of the AA. Okay. So we personally think that okay it will happen within no time, but it would be some kind of 50 to 60 percentage we can easily achieve. So the remaining thing it's an open question. Okay. So why I am saying is that currently the situation of AA is that it is uh, considered by some three or four companies. So it's a kind of limitation. We can't be able to approach or we don't get any kind of uh, resources or open source materials. So this post kind of gags, we need to consider this actively and only that AA boom will happen everywhere. Otherwise, some two or three companies will monopolize and they will have the entire country. We don't know what exactly they will do. We don't have any uh, prediction like how they will be using their technology, how they use it for business or any other kind of purposes. So the potential is open, open source. It's very working in this case. Okay. So within that mindset, I am inviting you all to session the future of artificial intelligence with open source tools. So nothing complex with okay. You can understand only people are uh, having curiosity to understand things, but I can explain in a simplest way. These things are most of the things are self-explanatory, but let me explain them. I'm currently pointing all things towards the future. 
the existing scenarios, everybody knows how it is. Yes, the chat GPT thing you might have experienced, right? Everyone is doing something in chat and even scoring or even score preparing a mail or for a project presentation. Currently, we are asking the help of chat GPT. So there are various other tools. The similar way or in a better way, they will bring this up. For that, we need to improvise. So generally there are solutions, but on top of that, we can do some kind of customization. And only we will be getting some improvised results. So for that, this openness is required. So that then, the democratization a development. So that's the thing we need to consider every day. A vast and growing ecosystem. So as I said earlier, day by day there are new models coming up, new researches happening, and the accuracy is in process. For example, considering in the case of Charge GPT, there are different versions for the last few months. So first, when they introduced, they had a token limit, and we were repeatedly seeing this thing like this man with you couldn't be able to do anything, or they may be asking for kind of recharge. So currently, they have increased the token limit and everything. So similar to that, there are many open source AI models also released. They are giving much better results, so we doesn't need to go behind the chat GPT one. For example, uh, the Lama, you might have heard of it. It was came in news like a leakage, but soon Meta made it as open source. Currently, we are actively using it. So on top of that, there are customized Lama models where you can easily get the exact result of chat GPT with this open kind of model. So, a diverse community of contributors. So, as I said, the openness relates in the communities. We can't uh, get everything within a closed loop. So, whenever you have that open support, the entire world, like the alchemist, you know, if you want to achieve something, the entire universe will start conspiring to achieve it. So, similar way, the strength of openness lies in that community status. So, whenever we are having a large bunch of people, we will be getting that finest result. You can see that, uh, you see, uh, whenever we started, we had a uh, video. That, that day was personal person describing about some millions of stars in to his that proposal, the postman. So that came with that openness. So whenever we are having that uh, contribution, then their community will start delivering something. Okay, so whenever you see, uh, I hope you all having a minimal technical program. So whenever you are doing something, immediately, you will be asking for some reference, probably some GitHub proposal case. So whenever we are having that kind of uh, searching, the very first thing you will be noticing about that stars. The English star will only trust, and within that trust, we can build our own standards. They improved and adapted. Next is benefits. Okay. So currently, uh, Google is come up with the bar, open AI with chat GPT. Microsoft is all almost already make association with this part, I mean not part, this open AI. And there are many other things happening in the industry. But see, uh, suppose you want to do something as a startup culture or a in a small, small organization's way, you can't compete with this Google or Open AI. So only thing we can do is that we need some kind of open source tools. The Lama introduced, everybody was running behind with Lama. Why? Because that was open thing and we can do something. Otherwise, there will be some kind of copyright issues. We don't know what exactly the train data. There are n number of hidden scenarios. So in order to recover, or we need to get some kind of plan home, then only we can arrange or we can improvise or at least understand something. So for that, that openness is needed. And that is the beneficiary. So ultimately, we are the beneficiaries. If we have some kind of mindset, we need a mentality to accept this openness, and only we will have kind of uh, improvisation, but we, we need to make research. So for that, this openness is required. The benefits, okay. So, hope you all know GAW. <coughs> 
It's a kind of parent of that Linux, okay? So, do you know how that evolved? Okay, let me tell you a story. It happened around the 1980s, I believe, okay? Uh, uh, it's in, I'm my Massachusetts Institute of Technology, okay? So, there were, uh, there was a printer, it was stopped working, okay? So, that manufacturer of the printer was Xerox. MAT is a kind of uh, the terminal based on this gathering place. So one software engineer, it was, he was around 27 years mm -hmm. age, he used to repair print, print printers. So he approached the system and he tried to debug that source. Okay. So in between, he was able to identify that there are some portions of that software he couldn't have access. So when he uh, sent a mail or uh, communicated with that vendor, they were saying that it is a proprietary software they couldn't give that access to that kid. So he was frustrated because he already uh, repaired other equipment drives, but he couldn't able to do anything on this particular set. Then after a couple of years, several around 1983, he come up with an operating system. So that is his DNA. So the initiation of DNA happened with this printer mechanics. And uh, that created, I mean, that was, at that time it was Unix. The entire world was controlled by this Unix operation. So, so when this ENU came out, there was an open source alternative. And later, see, or you are using, or we are using this Linux and everything. There are different versions of Linux. But the history of the Linux lies in that malfunction, malfunction printer. And we don't know the correctness, but this is a <coughs> Now we are celebrating GNS 40th birthday, okay, 2023 is 40th. And innovation and collaboration. So actually these are benefits. Whenever we are investing our time or energy to something, we will get benefited. Uh, it is a positive way or negative way, we will be getting some experience. On top of that experience, we can contribute and we can share that knowledge. So that, say for example, I am knowing something and discuss something with you, you will be having a different mindset, you will be collaborating. As I said earlier, when we are sitting in Pandi, we will be discussing many things. Out of that, we just started kind of creating. Then people gather and same mentality, they were discussing something. And out of that, we come up with a common conclusion and we start with it as an MVP. MVP means minimum viable product. Okay. So, end of the end result will be a minimum viable product. Flexibility and customization. So whenever we have that source code, we can do any number of things on that. Whether it will work or not, we will do something. On top of that, somebody will success, other will fail. But ultimately, there is an experience. On top of that, we can move forward. Airport good. Uh, probably now the entire world is thinking in this way. Like, we have technologies, we know what exactly we will be doing in a couple of years. But the impact, okay, so we will be familiar with that in the movie. There are many uh, scientific movies. So, for example, if we are uh, aiming for a good cause, unintentionally something it may happen in a worse place. So that we need to consider. Even Starman, not Starman, but the A, I just forgot his name, the father of open AI. Anybody who invented this chat debate, he was saying that uh, he is reaching towards a limit and even he couldn't predict how this AI will go. So everybody is fearing, okay, even the, that the European Standard Committee and everybody is saying that maybe they need to put hard restrictions on this AI development. Then, we'll, then not only it will be in undercut, but just somehow somebody will mark on, do some mark on sanities. It can affect the entire human. And one more. See, uh, the entire world is consist of many different varieties of people. For example, we have uh, climate changes or poverty, and this, this is data. So, whenever we found that uh, good A possibilities, we can easily understand. For example, there is a threat coming in next week. With that data analysis, we can easily come up with the preventive measures. So, A have asked a range of possibilities. So, whenever, whenever we are having that kind of understanding and having a good course, we can easily mitigate so many catastrophes. A for the edge computing. So, 
currently uh, somebody was saying that IoT things and we have here a process and there are many classification of uh, build things. So every place we can implement A, for example, if we have the smart watches, we are collecting the data every time, everywhere. Within data, we can easily come up with some calculations and within that calculation, we can easily come up with some kind of uh, notices or warning or kind of summaries. So with the A's, the pace and everything can be increased in a stupendous manner. Responsibility. So whenever we are facing this, again, I'm willing that uh, concept of openness. When we are having that proper community, we will be having that openness, and we can easily come up with the good solutions. These are some of the case studies. So the deep market. So much one of the open A tool is used in healthcare. Transportation, we are using openly, so you can easily Google it okay. Uh, thanks to like is used in the manufacturing industry. So these are basic examples. There are n number of other platforms, tools available in the industry. Some of them are open AG is useful in agriculture. Okay, so these are the case studies and how the future of open source AI will Nobody is having clear cut definition on it. Everybody is saying many things. So out of that, I just summarize two things. So one among them is the democratization day, as I said earlier, <laughs> when he when he have that uh, kind of large data set full of resources, that openness will by default become. And the only said like we don't need to focus on research, just focus on the process. The process will bring the research. So we just need to democratize things so that how the data is going, how the result is fetching, how the mechanism is. So everybody knows. So that transparency is needed. Otherwise, we don't know. For example, if we are giving every uh, one starter to some third party agency, we don't know what exactly they are doing with the data. It can come up with the good post, but we don't, we, are, we don't have any assurance how it will be. So that is a democratic thing. So that we will be getting better. And accelerate innovation. So a bunch of three or four, five people doing something is entirely different from this open source proposals. We just commit our code somewhere so that the other users can look on that, they can act create pull requests, then active suggestions. Within that, we can easily <coughs> spread out. Promote transparency and accountability. So whatever we are doing, the whole world is listening that. So within that concept, we will be automatically saying about thinking about the good courses rather than hiring or doing some practices will be unanimously working towards a common goal. So that's the conclusion. So even more than me, you can always get to this. Open source is powerful tool that is shaped in the future. Whether it is open source or not, this is a fact. But at some point, this closed loop will get a saturation. But for the openness or the open community, this wouldn't have. Every day people are contributing and we'll be getting new fresh thoughts and within that we can do many things. By making AI more accessible, affordable, innovative and accountable, open source AI is enabling new and exciting AI applications in a wide range of industries. So we are not setting up any limits. Even we don't know how it will be in coming months or years or nearby or long as future. So the entire thing is changing from shaping into a new future. Get involved in the open source AI community and start. Of course, the name of the course is this. That TTO is a time till open source alternative. That's a wonderful thing. So, in a generic way, the researchers say that whenever we are having a close or proprietary software, there will be an alternative open source component within some six to seven years. So, even if we don't consider things, it will automatically happen. And thanks to this kind of uh, services like GitHub, now there is no need to wait this kind of seven years. That gap is reducing in a better way. So that, even, see, you can see that whenever I am starting my career, or even my uh, while the academy, I don't have kind of understanding you people are having them. So no, you need things like these events are happening. You are attending, you are getting knowledge. So you don't need to wait this kind of seven years to complete an open source software. So that's why I'm saying that. Yeah, so we start
Obviously, we can't build ASICs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't go there. <laughs> yeah, within couple of years, this may say, for example, we start with the four like, weeks. Having two more weeks, we will be like that. Now we are discussing in terms of three weeks. No, so there, is, there is hope. Like, <laughs> India, we are moving towards a semiconductor uh, driven IT field. So, sooner or later, we'll see that. ASICs are also being built and uh, uh, India has a very prolific semiconductor design industry. Design industry is fantastic. But it's, but it's controlled by these Honeywell and uh, <coughs> basically it's like Intel, AMD and yeah, NVIDIA also has a big team in India. Then there is a small design team in Hyderabad for Apple. Uh, Google has just started their Bangalore office. Silicon, yeah. Silicon team just started the Silicon team there. Uh, <coughs> There is ta talent in India, but uh, again, it's still a shortage of talent. It's, there is a shortage, shortage of talent but in India also. It's not easy doing these things. <coughs> Designing a chip is very expensive. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <coughs> but data and uh, data infrastructure. And, uh, infrastructure, you're right. Data and devices, that's where. No, we had the advantage that we could write software, but now we're limited by the data and <coughs> the machines we need for that. We don't control it. Like even <coughs> at the fundamental level, right? We we do have good engineers, but we don't have like fundamental understanding among engineers. That's what I've seen. Like the skill gap is still there. Uh, you can build uh, brute force, but like out of the box thinking uh, in terms of using special case uh, functions or final percent yeah, <coughs> yeah those, that's a very small group of individuals and they concentrated in these <coughs> yeah, certain parts of the industry okay. yeah. that depends on your PA and structure and other components that's why you will see that innovative <coughs> stuff like RLSF is being built in at open AI it's not being built in India <coughs> even Google, there was some leakage of information like they were saying that even open AI or Google can't survive with this kind of post to And because the future of AI is in place in the open source. Yeah. Well, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.